What is going on, Lunatics? One of the biggest questions asked is, can Luna Classic get to one cent? Can we get to a penny? If we can get to a penny, that's about 100x or so from where we are right now. And to be fair, it really looks like a possibility. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not qualified to give you financial advice, but I am qualified to look around, kick the tires on something like this, and let you know what I think about whether or not it will happen. Now, the reason that I think a lot of this is under consideration right now and the structure to move us back in that one cent range as a starter is this. Currently, there is a repeg proposal that's been presented that's being voted on. It's not being voted on very well. Uh, you will notice that the bad guys have voted no, so it might be a good proposal. Uh, I don't know. We're going to check it out as we get into it. I think I told you before, like, I don't think it really does anything that uh, we'll look at. It. Uh, but the other thing is we're also having discussions about the, the number of birds and we just hit a milestone. There's now less than 6.8 trillion tokens. Now, that's not a huge amount when you look at this from a, an extended kind of zoom out sort of window. However, it's not nothing. And all we need is to continue on the path. Retail comes back. We start to trade a little bit. I've got a new project to show you today. Revisiting a project that we showed you before. But, you know, we're going to check the price action. Nice little pump in price action. Nice little interest coming back. And, you know, if we get a, a, a nice little run, uh, a nice, uh, you know, a, a nice continuation of interest in Luna Classic, then a penny is not out of the way. Now, I predicted 2.8 cents going into the end of this bull run. We've got a long way to go. I'm thinking that it's going to be about a 300x from where we are right now. Uh, let me know what you think in the predictions down below. And let's kick this off. Uh, and we'll start off with uh, a little bit of news that talked about the price starting to rally. So the um, preventing double name and network validating on chain was rejected. Uh, and then the price jumped 5%. Now, does that have anything to do with it? No. So, uh, and you can see right here, the proposal received some votes in favor from validators, but top validator all nodes who you are staking with uh, voted no, citing no enforceable rules should be created on permissionless blockchains as the reason. Now, what is All Nodes telling you? All Nodes is telling you that they would need to centralize this project. Remember, All Nodes was first referred by Luna Terraform Labs. And here we are. Jesus is Lord vo voted no twice. Now, if you think that that is a, a wise method, if you're the all nodes, if you will, of decision making. Uh, if you think it's poorly worded, fair enough. That's not what they said, though. What they said was no enforceable rules should be created on permissionless blockchains. And what they're telling you is somebody should take control or be able to take control of it with a 51% attack. Somebody like an, well, I don't know, all nodes who's now running the largest validator in sponsoring the rest of the validators. Um, I don't know what you think, but it uh, looks to me pretty centralized at this point. I don't think that there's any reason uh, for anybody reasonably to believe that it, it's not, despite the fact that we have a lot of people talking about decentralization and how important it is. These guys right here, they're allowing this and they're promoting this at this point. So Prop 12 101 has failed to pass. The proposal aimed at tackling the emergence of validators running multiple nodes, posing a risk to the decentralization and security of the network. So again, they're not concerned with it. Out of 45 validators, only 20, including Interstellar Lounge, Happy Caddy Crypto, Terra Vita, uh, Elbun, and Stakebin, voted in favor of the proposal. As CoinGate reported yesterday, uh, this measure addresses concerns about potential risk to the network security and decentralization. Validators currently operating multiple nodes would need to revert to a single node operation. Non-custodial providers must enforce these restrictions rigorously. The proposal seeks to diminish the likelihood of Sybil attacks, where one entity controls multiple nodes, thus compromising the network's integrity. And that doesn't matter to them. So... Um, now, lung price, of course, soared 5% after that proposal, but it was not because of that proposal. That is dumb. 
to consider that that was why that it happened. Uh, what happened was we got about $50 billion in capital into the market, $37 billion one day, $50 billion the next day. Now, of course, the U.S. market has sucked the liquidity back out of it, but uh, it, it did cause a significant pump. Now, for discussion over here on Commonwealth, uh, there's another non-starter here, I believe, uh, increased burn tax for Luna Classic to 1.2%, uh, that which is just nonsense. Like that, why would it, it does? This is gonna. This is not gonna go through. Um, a USTC lockup, uh, bad idea. Um, it, I'll invest. This is when we were talking about how we were get, gonna do the the USTC lockup, which was a, a down a little bit further. Um, a, a, and then. Uh, lunk one dollar fast track recovery via fair transaction tax. Um, you know none of this stuff. Uh, none, none of this stuff is going to go through. So um, uh, th these are silly proposals. However, th here's the important part: you need some of these silly proposals to have discussions in order for real proposals to take place. Because now you're starting to see the the uh, uh, the the level of competency. You're starting to see the level of interest. You're starting to see the level and the measure of everybody who's involved here. And you will know whether or not you think that something would or would not work. This is giving you a clear indication of what people are looking at and that there, in fact, is a lot of life here in this blockchain. So, uh, and, and by the way, we're going to talk about one of those projects in just a moment. But it should be noted that, you know, people do care. There's a lot of people who care about the success of the Luna Classic blockchain and it's good to see. It's refreshing to see, even if we don't agree. But you also know that there are some bad actors, people out there for themselves, people who are not, they don't have the the, the health of the blockchain at heart or in mind, but they still have a vote. So it is imperative upon you to stake with people who uh, do the votes the way that you think they should be done. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I disagree with uh, what all nodes said fundamentally, because what they're doing is they're inviting centralization into the prospect. Now, I don't have a problem with centralization, by the way. I do want to stress that decentralization to me is an interesting concept, but it also in this situation leaves uh, Luna Classic and USTC up to uh, what's happening right now. And what's happening right now is that it's struggling to create that vibrance and 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 get that build back better, if you will, um, or make uh, make this blockchain great again, whatever you know, whatever you use. Um, it's struggling to do that, and it's struggling to do that because um, bad actors are in control, not in control, but they have a huge vote, more vote than they should. But let's look at price action. Let's you know, kind of break this down a little bit and. Uh, let's see what really is happening here. And by the way, this is me taking another victory lap over price action. So guys, I can't stress enough that on Friday when I drew this pattern right here, I did not think it was going to do it exactly the way that I said. Again, I'm just guessing when I do a lot of this stuff. I'm not saying that this is what is or is not going to happen. This is just what I think is going to happen. When it does happen... I get to take a victory lap, right? Uh, but here's the thing. If you look at the the nature of how this is moving right now, fundamentally, we we had a spike up into the 12s, which I told you guys 11,748 was going to represent that sort of resistance area. And it did. That's where we settled. Uh, that's exactly where we settled. But we got that one spike for about two or three hours that, that took us last night up into this 12.3 territory. Uh, before we got summarily rejected from that position, came back down, and now we're testing the 50 MA one more time. It looks like we've got a nice little bounce off of the 50, and we're correcting. Now, if you consider the impulse move, and I want to say the impulse move started right about, let's, we're just going to use here as an example here, but if you see this, then we got the 0.786 retracement immediately and now we're coming back up so i would expect to move uh on this 38 right here to about uh 11.6 for a test uh probably get stuck in this range at 11.5 for a little bit of a test as well and then uh, a more bold move up into the 11.8 maybe even retesting that that previous high before we start to kick it up uh and and move up a little bit further but uh when we get a victory lap we take the victory lap right Anyway, long term, uh, nothing has really changed. This is still going to be my goal uh, up in this range. In fact, if you give it just, we're simplifying this, right? But if you give it just this kind of 
a bullhorn strategy saying that, you know, we're, we're minting new lows. We're, we're kind of in this range right now. It's clearly a, a decent range. Now, this is not a breakout range. This is this is a, a, a fall down uh, pattern. However, we are in the start of, you know, that, that pre bull market phase where we're still in accumulation. But, you know, it would be nothing to see this thing do this right here. Um, and, and then really start to have a, a, a nice little breakout. And again, it's going to take about a 300x to get to my projection, which is going to be 2.8 cents, which uh, in, in fact, that's 100, that's 200, um, that's 100x, that's 200, 200x from, from where we are right now uh, is what it's going to take. Now, let's take a moment here, pause this, and let's look at USTC. Uh, USTC, as you see right here, makes no sense that this happened, by the way. Uh, it makes no sense whatsoever. But if you listen to me when I said, get yourself some USTC because it's going to happen, then make sure you take your profit along the way and make sure that that you're, you're liquid, if you will, because there's going to be uh, a fall. It's going to fall back down. Uh, I, there's no reason uh, for this pump to be happening right now. It got rejected right at the range that we would kind of expect because this is that long term momentum area. Uh, if we zoom out here, you can see it right there. Uh, you know, we're just we're, we're coming up to this area every single time. Now is going to be a more muted move. So what do you expect to see in the long term? Well, let's go back to the one hour and, you know, let's break that down. Well, so we get this move. We got this move confirmed. Now, this could be the start of a reversal. And if it is, and we see a reversal back up into this range, uh, just again, as a test here, if we get that move back into this range again, then we are going to reject back down most probably into this two cent range one more time, probably bounce up here 22.6 cents. Uh, and then, you know, we're going to kick out here and we're going to go sideways afterwards. The most likely scenario, the most likely scenario is generally when we break out and we have these breakouts, it tends to go sideways. So uh, we'll get a move and then it'll go sideways and then we'll start to see that upward momentum. Now, uh, we rejected at 2.5, which is this volume of range. Um, it, it, the next area of acceptance, if you will, it's going to be about three cents. So with a little bit of strength, we can get up above three cents. But, uh, you know, the big one is going to be three and a half cents up here. So. Uh, and, and then zooming out, you, you guys can kind of get an idea here. There, you know, there is a pattern uh, to to make that move uh, towards this upside, was you know, to get a little bit more of momentum going. But we're not really in that spot right now. We're just kind of bouncing. Remember, the last time we did this, that's what happened. But the range kind of um, the, the the range on it kind of changed a little bit. Um, and then we had this enormous breakout, and and that's where. Uh, all of this happened previously. If we zoom out here, you can see that we we talked about this before, um, and, and we had this long term line over here. But here was the important part. Over here, we had this thing playing out, and it was playing out, you know, picture perfect. Um, it really was kind of like right here, other than that crazy, crazy spike. So it's kind of like that right there. Uh, it's doing the same thing right now, right? So it did that, and then it broke out, but it broke out sideways, and then we got that enormous spike, and then we got that retest. Didn't successfully retest the top, the all-time high or the, the local all-time high, but we got that retest and we got that push back up a little bit. Now we're coming down and we're doing the same thing again. So, you know, I would consider that, you know, basically we're going to come over here through June uh, and then boom, we probably get that next big, big move. And then by the end of the year, I predict that we're going to be at 10 cents. So, uh, and I'm doing that because I think that the bull market is really going to start to, 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 to manifest. Now, Let's break into this new project and let's talk about that. Uh, we're going to skip a, quite a bit of it. I know I've been a little bit talkative so far. Uh, one more thing. The volume, 83 million, volume of tarot, uh, of USTC, 111 million. So uh, big time numbers, by the way, if you want to see who voted which way, Lunk Dash over here, uh, community driven repeg proposal. Uh, Jesus is Lord, voted no. Uh, uh, matter of fact, if you click it, you can see who's voting yes and you can see who's voting no. Uh, these are the people that voted yes, uh, the people that voted no. Um, Jesus is Lord one and two, um, interstellar lounge, community first lunk, lunk development fund, LVS, Validaris. And by the way, not everybody here, I want to stress, not everybody's here is a bad actor in this, in this regard. This is just a, a not a good proposal. So, um, you, you see people over here also, ex, uh, abstaining, uh, as well. It just, you, you know, you really have to go through this and, and, and look at it, but I, and I encourage you to do that by the way, uh, but go through it, kind of look at it and, you know, see what what you think, but um, th th this is a proof of concept, and you know, uh, we'll see how this uh, plays out. This is a, a this 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 is really complicated. This is really complicated and unenforceable. 
So I just I don't think that it has any legs to 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 make something happen. So uh, with that being said, let's get into the token of the day. Uh, make sure before that if you haven't already, uh, Terra Casino. If you want to do a little bit of gaming, uh, you can use Bitcoin. You can use Ethereum. You can use uh, Luna Classic. Uh, you can use a number of different tokens, BNB, uh, I think. And if you want to do some trading, link uh, there's links below. Uh, you can trade on Weeks if you want to burn some tokens. You can also trade on Femex. You can trade on KCEX. KCEX is a non-KYC. Uh, so uh, that's the one that I'm preferring right now. It's where a lot of my trade volume is coming from right now, KCEX, because MEXC has been you know, basically backstabbing everybody uh, and, and doing just wild stuff. So um, Weeks is my preferred platform. Terra Casino uh, also has a trading platform. We'll get into that some other day, but you know, go check these out. This is all sponsored by Terraport. So uh, make sure that you use Terraport.finance if you are doing some trading uh, that burns Luna Classic on every transaction. They are one of the top burners in the space too. So uh, let's get into the big one for the day, and that is food. Uh, food, we talked about about a month ago. Uh, when we talked about it, it was up in this range here, came down for a retest, uh, which, you know, that stands to reason. This is exactly what you see. You saw that flagpole sort of situation. Then you saw the move down. Uh, you came into uh, you, you came into range over here. Then you drop below the range, and it seems like you're having that little recovery pattern. Now, if you grant me that, you know, this first move here was, you know, maybe a little played out, it probably more like this right here. Um, but, you know, this is uh, this is how it's looking right now. Trade volume, uh, trade volume light, of course, it's got an $11,000 market cap, 12,000 in liquidity. This is a, a perfect opportunity for you if you are so inclined to get a little bit risk on. And here's the reason that I say that this is important. Remember, this project, um, th this project, let me show you the, the website here. Uh, food token, the uh, one percent of all transactions could to the funding of permaculture farms uh, globally through Terra Farming. Terra Farming is a really good initiative. If this gets some legs, this is across the world a fantastic opportunity. So uh, please, by all means, go to foodtoken.tech and really read up on this. Uh, this is creating. This is look. You're learning how to. You're you're teaching the world how to uh, how to be fed. You're, you're you're teaching the world how to. Um, uh, secure their future, if you will. So this, I think, is very, very important. Now, is it fundamentally a project that's sustainable? That's going to be the question. And in the event that trading and burning tokens and things like that are part of the, the schematic of it, then this helps fundamentally the, the entire uh, ecosystem here for Luna Classic. So again, I encourage you to go look at this and decide for yourself whether this is a worthy investment. But I want to stress to you at a, basically a 12, uh, 42, let's call it a $42,000 market cap with all tokens out there. You know, let's call it that. Uh, you know, if this thing goes to a $5 million market cap, it's 100x from where you are right now. So do you want 100x? Because that's how you get a 100x. And it would only be a $5 million market cap. If this thing goes uh, into a 10 or 15 or $20 million market cap as a uh, just just as a project, right? Then what really fundamentally happens here is that you have changed your life, and it's it's just that easy. Now the volume over here only eight hundred fifty three dollars. So, uh, but this the, the thing about this is this is happening right now in a vacuum, if you will. Retail hasn't returned to crypto yet. Uh, not a lot of retail. So when it returns and when this, this system gets a little bit of an upgrade, if you will, then something like this is going to absolutely send. It's my opinion that this is going to absolutely send for a short period of time. Will it, will it survive a long period of time? I don't know that. I, I, I don't know. I like the project. I like the people behind it. Uh, but all of this is speculative. Uh, to point out here, though, we're up 40% in the seven days. So if you bought a week ago, then you know you're feeling a nice little uh, gain in your pocket. So uh, I, I would certainly at least consider having yourself a little bit of food supply, if you will, on this. And if you can go check out the uh, my, now my by the way my Twitter has been hacked. So uh, if you go check them out, it's over here on uh, Twitter. It's at Lunk Food. The food token is here to bring self sufficiency to the world. We're permaculture experts here to grow food on Earth. 100% transaction fees fund farmers. So uh, a fantastic opportune sort of situation here um and and they are partnered with a few of these other ecosystems that's part of the e frg ecosystem uh here's rakoff you know the, these guys they all work together uh for the betterment of the project and for the community here if you are looking to get into their um uh, uh what do you call it 
uh, Telegram, then it's the FRG ecosystem. It's, it's part of it. So um, I, I would certainly go in here and, and give it a, a, a uh, a look and and see if it's something that you vibe with and if you do then make sure that you you make that buy for yourself so uh that's it i know i got a little bit cryptonomy.finance is your venture capital investment fund if you're looking to launch a project and you need seed capital contact cryptonomy.finance today they have a 74 million dollar investment fund and they processed over 10 billion dollars in the last five years so far, guys, on my flexible account, I've earned 0.001 Bitcoin. On my fixed account, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to make another deposit here, 0.5 Bitcoin. We're going to do this for 12 months again. We create another staking protocol with a half a Bitcoin for the next one year. Check my Ethereum holdings. You can see that by the end of this vesting process, I will have 3.23 Ethereum more than the three that I put in. And the most important thing, gentlemen, ladies, the launch pad. The launch pad is still producing significant yields on every launch. My accrued interest so far, a little bit over $109,000. Can't stress to you enough, guys. Check out cryptonomy.finance today if you need venture capital or if you just want to earn some yield off of your holding wordy here but again this is uh luna classic i'm pretty passionate about luna classic uh i think that this is a great ecosystem that only has up momentum coming forward so let me know what you think in the comments down below it's not financial advice but i'm always right check out food token